Hello, this is Stuart Parkinson, Director of Scientists for Global Responsibility, speaking on the Global Day of Action on Military Spending. I'm speaking via video link in order to keep my carbon emissions down. Back in 2004, the UK government's chief scientific advisor famously argued that climate change is the most serious problem we are facing, more serious even than the threat of terrorism. This perspective has been reinforced by numerous scientific reports in the media since. The latest warning comes from a substantial report from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the UN's main advisory body on climate science. It warns of severe, pervasive and irre irreversible impacts unless major action is taken to reduce carbon emissions. The IPCC goes on to state that climate change can in indirectly increase risks of violent conflicts in the form of civil war by amplifying drivers of these conflicts such as poverty and economic shocks. So to help improve international security, the UK needs to play a leading role in reducing carbon emissions. But the government here has recently been stepping back from action to reduce these emissions. Here are three examples. Firstly, it is increasing subsidies for UK oil and gas exploration, especially um, including uh, the controversial process of fracking. Secondly, it is reducing national efforts to improve energy efficiency, for example by replacing a successful home efficiency scheme with the deeply flawed Green Deal and cutting back on the Eco program. Thirdly, it is refusing to commit to a 2030 target for reducing carbon emissions of the electricity sector to virtually zero, as recommended by its advisors. Despite climate change being such a serious threat, the Department of Energy and Climate Change has an annual budget of only £4 billion, about one-tenth of that of the Ministry of Defence. This is 50% less than under the previous government. What is worse, three-quarters of this budget is spent on just managing the waste from the UK's existing nuclear power stations. This is just one example of inadequate public spending in this area. So public spending on tackling climate change should be increased greatly to reflect the scale of the problem. We need a major increase in efforts to reduce the UK's carbon emissions as well as helping the UK to adapt to the climate change that is already underway. Much of the spending on the UK's energy infrastructure is carried out by industry, but increases in public spending, including for the DECC and other public bodies, could be used for activities such as Firstly, a major increase in energy conservation programs, especially installing better insulation in homes and public sector buildings. Secondly, extra spending on deployment of renewable energy technologies, especially including providing grants for community energy schemes. Thirdly, more research and development on new sustainable energy technologies. This is especially needed as currently the government spends five times more on research and development for its nuclear weapons system than for renewable energy. And fourthly, further improvements are needed to the UK's flood defences and other measures to adapt to climate change. All these activities create jobs and implementing them on a large scale would create many thousands of jobs. Therefore, we firmly believe that increases in public spending on tackling climate change could and should come from a reallocation of some of the MOD's budget. This would have social, environmental, economic and security benefits.